I'm sorry. We're ready to hear City Council Bill 19-0453. The purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 3127 East Baltimore Street, block 1743 with lot 002 as outlined in red on the accompanying plat from the R8 zoning district to the C1 zoning district. Uh, it's my understanding all the public notice requirements have been met. Um, the sponsor of this bill is Councilman Cohen. Uh, Councilman Cohen, are you with us? Yes, sir. Okay, you wanna, you got the floor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the committee. Uh, we are very excited about this bill. It represents an opportunity for, um, to really enliven this street. We've seen a lot of, um, growth both residential and also sort of commercial in the north of patterson park area there was just a recently opened pie shop um, called pie time that i recommend everybody check out um, it's about a block and a half away uh, this project is the conversion of an old church um, that faces the park into a mixed-use building um, it's taking advantage of some historic tax credits at the state. Uh, the community is in full support um, and is really excited for the potential to uh, just really transform this area into a much more walkable um, sort of feet on the street experience. Um, so would appreciate your support. Thank you, Councilman. Any, any questions to Councilman Cohen? Sponsor? No? Okay. Let's let's go on to uh, agents report. Planning staff? Yes. Um, sorry, Foxtrot. Look at my house right now. Sorry. Um, good afternoon, um, Mr. Chairman, members. Uh, uh, this is Matt DeSantis with the uh, planning department. Um, so we, we have a, uh, an unusual um, situation um, with um, with this this bill hearing, um, uh, this bill has actually not yet uh, um, been heard by the planning commission, but it is in fact scheduled for um, the planning commission's meeting on Thursday. So at, at this point in time, um, there is no commission report to um, uh, present to the committee. Um, but I, I, I so but and being clear that that um, there's no planning commission report, um, um, you know I I think it's it. It's still it's uh, um, uh, it's it's fair to um, advise the uh, committee that the, the planning department staff um, has some some concerns with the bill, um, justifying either the the um, mistake or the change in 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 character um, criteria. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions just from a planning department perspective. But again, um, uh, at this point in time, we have no planning commission report. Okay. Uh Thank you. Um, let me, before I go into any of my committee members, uh, you're hundred percent correct. Uh, there is a planning commission hearing this Thursday, and I just want the committee members to, to understand is that we are not, we are not going to take a vote on this today. We're going to go into recess. Uh, we're going to have the planning commission have their hearing to hear the report from the planning staff. And then what I'll do is we will announce after Thursday planning commission hearing and the recommendation from them and the planning staff, then I will announce uh, a work, working session and a vote in the future. So uh, thank you for your remarks. Um, any any questions or concerns from the, from the uh, committee? Yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. You got the floor, go ahead. Uh, is that me? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, hey, Matt, the, what is, by what determination does, um, I guess, did the planning department recommend that churches be zoned residential versus commercial? Yeah. Um. Good question. So, so, so the um, um, at this I, at this point in time, um, um, the, um, the the department anticipates recommending 
to the planning commission um, as as part of the part of part of the the uh, um, sort of the um, um, analysis portion. Um, so the the property was zoned um, 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 th this particular property and, and almost the entire area. Um, it, it's zoned R eight now, <clears throat> and it was zoned R eight um, at least since nineteen seventy one under the uh, 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 former zoning code. So um, um, so the R eight zoning. Um, that existed before um, 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 during transform was maintained for this property as well as for most uh, uh, um, uh, other properties. And the significant reason why for this particular church property, um, uh, um, um, the R8 zoning was maintained and, and it wasn't, and it, it, it was not zoned C1 or some other commercial zoning district during transform was because um, uh, the current zoning code also uh, uh, includes the brand new neighborhood commercial establishment provision, which um, um, which which permits um, through through the, the um, um, BMZA process um, that those certain um, 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 certain neighborhood focused commercial uses uh, for historically non residential buildings. So so um, the the. The, the huge benefit of uh, uh, from a neighborhood perspective of the church being zoned R8 and remaining zoned R8 is that um, 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 certain uses, coincidentally, all the uses proposed by the particular development that's pushing this rezoning, um, um, office uses, you know, cafe, retail uses, um, those sorts of neighborhood uh, um, uh, appropriate pedestrian focused um, commercial uses uh, um, um, are, are permitted um, um, conditionally through the BMZA. So, so from a neighborhood perspective, it, it's a, it's it's a huge benefit for the neighborhood because it gives the neighborhood a lot more leverage in being able to go to the board and what and negotiate with property owners um, and, and go to the board and have and and have certain certain um, neighborhood specific conditions placed on uses to make sure that they are. Consistent and 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 uh, compatible with the neighborhood, whereas a straight C one rezoning allows uh, all those neighbor commercial establishment uses, and uh, um, as well as some other other uses, which maybe not might not be the most appropriate for the middle of, of a, a rural house neighborhood, um, as permitted as permitted by right. So the neighborhood has so whether it's this property owner, any future property owner, the neighborhood loses that ability. To kind of um, uh, they lose a lot of their leverage because uses are permitted by right, and there's no there's no opportunity for that neighborhood engagement. So that's a that's a long explanation, which hope I hope answers your question of why the church during transform was was purposely um, 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 maintained its its R eight zoning designation. Dorsey, Jasper Dorsey, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, it's just really odd to me the consistent is there any consistency about how churches are zoned from one place to the next there's a church up the street from me um in you know a detach on a de detached home street and it is zoned just like the other houses on the street but it's obviously not a house it's obviously never ever been used for a residential purpose it's obviously constructed for a non-residential use regardless uh, of what that non-residential use is it it just it given that it makes little to no sense to me that such a building would ever be designated as a residential zone property sure and so i think there's there's probably a, a, um, um, a couple ways to uh, 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 answer the question i would imagine so, so so the zoning code in baltimore and 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 for, for the most part in um, um, in in virtually uh, um, uh, all jurisdictions in the in the country because of some uh, supreme court um, uh, history i'm sure victor can 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 speak to it. Um, um, places of worship are permitted by right in all residential zone districts. So, um, um, so from that perspective, it um, since 
a particular, a, a church or a synagogue or a mosque wouldn't need any particular, um, a, a different zoning designation for, for that use to, to be permitted. It could simply be from, from one just for the sake of, of simplicity and uniformity, um, um, having places of worship zone residential because, uh, because it's because a place of worship is permitted in, uh, um, in that district, I'm sure is a factor. And then also probably from the perspective of, of thinking, well, you know, um, um, and from, from certainly historically, um, there might have been a notion of, well, in case this this church, this place of worship no longer is a place of worship, we 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 would we would like to have the zoning designation for for the for the land be compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. So so zoning a place of worship um, with with a commercial zoning district, um, um, and um, I would imagine in many instances. The, no, the 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 thinking would have been well in case that church goes away we would like whatever whatever else comes on that land to to be to be compatible with with the surrounding neighborhood uh, uh, and that's why uh, that's why we're here today <laughs> yeah and and again um, 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 so so the um, and um, um, uh, Eric Tiso is on the call he was involved a lot during during, during transform uh, um, he can speak to some more. Uh, okay. Just beyond this, um, uh, Eric. Eric, you want to add yep, to this? Sure. So the fast version, uh, since the 1971 codes, we have 50 years of practice where religious land uses um, are considered compatible in residential neighborhoods where they are sited in uh, large swaths of residential, like this particular site is. They are zoned residential. They are deemed to support the neighborhood. And that's why they're zoned that way. Matt is correct that uh, a secondary benefit is that if the church ever goes away, uh, you're not bringing in a commercial incompatible use into that structure. Um, and then he also made reference to the Religious Land Use Institutionalized Persons Act of 2000, which uh, came in when I was a new planner here at the city. Um, and that really allowed for uh, places of worship to go into, at the time, predominantly industrial districts where they were not permitted uh, and the reason for that is wherever you had land uses that permitted assembly of people, uh, in that case, it was things like union halls, uh, then you had to also allow for assembly for religious uses. But by and large, as a default setting, uh, religious uh, places of worship are residentially zoned. They are also allowed in commercial districts and in some areas of the city, there were some competition concerns with displacing walkable commercial, but that's another uh, long story. Councilman Dorsey? Yeah, I guess that does. It still doesn't answer my like basic question. Is this is a structure that? So you talk about fifty some years or whatever of kind of precedent and case law um, establishing all this about where residential, uh, where, where where churches can go, uh, um, you know, in residential districts. Um, which is, I think, the opposite side of the coin. I mean, this is a this is a structure that was built long before that, right? I'm looking at the Estat record. It says that it was built in 1906, so long before that uh, Supreme Court ruling. Um, the question for me is the other side of the coin: why this structure, why this property that, as far back as our records go, has been a non-residential use should ever be determined to be a residential property. That is what doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, um, sorry if we weren't clear. I think the reason for that is uh, places of worship were considered compatible in residential areas and that you don't want to have them commercially zoned. And, and let's be clear, residential districts are for more than just residential uses. You can have things like schools, hospitals, places of worship, daycare centers, things of that nature that are considered compatible with homes that are allowed in that same district, yet are not so intense in use that they can potentially create problems for those homes. So that's the reason. But a house, so is, it, is it by coincidence that our zoning code permits a place of worship by right also in every single commercial zone district 
No, that's by design principally because of Arlupa from 20 years ago. What is that? Uh, I'm sorry, that's the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act. To be compatible with the legal requirements, we can't allow places of assembly uh, in commercial zones where you can't also allow places of worship. So that's why they're deliberately included there as well. Okay, well, I, then I still, I don't think this really, I still don't understand why a, a, a non-residential use property should be deemed residential by, you know, in name. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, oh, shoot. Any, any, other, any other committee yes. members? Catherine Clark, you got the floor, go ahead. Um, you unmute yourself. Oh, I did. Okay. You can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I could. Okay. All right. So, first of all, I did not, I got an agenda for tomorrow's planning commission, and I did not see this issue on that agenda. Now, is it really on that agenda? And I wonder if it really matters because. Mr. DeSantis, you could, if you would, you're, the planning staff is taking the negative position and referring to neighborhood commercial establishments. Um, and theoretically, the hearing is no longer necessary because of the length of time of this session today from the time of introduction. In other words, we've long passed the place where you must have a planning commission report, negative or positive. And somewhere in what I read, it said if as long as there was a as long as there was a planning commission report by third reader, um, that would planning would be happy. It wasn't required, but it is the way we operate and makes sense. We know probably it's going to be negative because of the in being in love with neighborhood commercial establishments, I, that whole issue. So, so here's my concern, and maybe you can help me or we have two council meetings left. I don't have any dog in this race, all right, except that I know the neighborhood only because the whole Clark family and Hagen family grew up in St. Elizabeth's Parish in that area. I mean, that's where everybody is from, but I, nobody called me um, from the neighborhood. But basically, um, just as a matter of logistics, it seems to me that we should hear the hearing now, make a decision, and perhaps, Mr. Chairman, vote because th that way we could be on second reader uh, and then have another council meeting, the last one, for third reader, instead of trying to double read at the very end. Things will probably be chaotic. I just say all that. Mr. DeSantis, what do you think? Yeah, so um, uh, I'll first say that, that we'll ultimately uh, uh, defer to Vic and legal department as far as, as what the code says and, and what the requirements are. Um, uh, but but um, I can just, just comment and give a little, bit of, a little bit of the backstory of why it got to this point. And when the bill was introduced last year, maybe last summer or last fall, uh, um, Planning staff met with with the applicants, uh, and we and and laid out on the table. You know, uh, we said, "Hey, project property it sounds it sounds fantastic, but the zoning we we don't think we're going to be able to justify either a change or a mistake. But we but it looks to us like neighbor commercial establishment is it like allows you to do everything that that you that you want to do. So we said, okay, well, you know, so like 
Can you give give us a response as to why you need the rezoning, why neighborhood commercial establishment? And then we never heard from the applicant again. So uh, so the plan, planning staff's assumption was that the bill had, had died. So as soon as we heard that the bill was scheduled for a committee hearing, we then, um, uh, in, in consultation with um, um, with the law department, um, 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 in um, in following their direction to just try and make sure that that things that 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 that, that you know that the letter of the law was complied with, we scheduled it for our first available hearing. So, Councilwoman Councilwoman Clark, I. I had the same thought press that you have. I think what I want to do is, it's really not up to the planning staff. Um, I want to hear from the law department. I think it's Victor because they take a new position. And I really want to make sure we, we keep this clean. And I want to hear their opinion. And if it takes us to have a planning commission hearing to the public and also with the staff, we can, I'm sure the president, Van and Scott will, uh, double read if that's an issue but i mean we haven't yeah. even decided the issue yeah. because we still have to hear about like the community and everything else like i think right. that mr desantis has been very helpful from my perspective yeah. i see yeah. what happened thank you okay thank you uh let's go to yes go ahead who's councilman stokes um I think if we don't have all the reports in, why are we doing taking a um a vote on this now? The only I mean, Councilman, the only report, if I could have the floor, the only report we have don't have is the planning staff and the commission. Right. Okay, that's fine. But if we don't have the planning staff report, why are we voting now? We're not we're not voting. We're gonna I'm gonna go to okay. the well, I, I heard Councilwoman Clark talking about voting. I'm our question be why. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's let's wait till we get to Victor. So right now, let's go to BMZA so we stick with the decorum part. BMZA? BMZA? Okay, I'm looking at BMZA has no objection. DOT? Liam Davis, Baltimore City DOT. We stand by our bill report, which is no objection. Thank you. Uh, Let's go to the law department. I before you before you testify, Victor. I want to make. I just want it known public. I want to make sure this is we do it clean and have public testimony and the eyes are dotted and the T's are crossed. So I'm asking you, what if you can, the avenue to keep this clean and a bit. Go ahead. Right. So uh, the council was correct. Uh, Mary Pat Clark uh, is correct that uh, under our local code. Uh, you've had the bill long enough that you can proceed without a planning commission report. The problem is we have a state law that says that when we're talking about a rezoning, you need to have a report from the planning commission. So we're looking for that report. Uh, and frankly, if that report doesn't have to say anything, it doesn't have to provide facts, it doesn't have to provide anything, you just need something back from the planning commission to say that they've looked at it. So what we're looking at today is presumably we're looking for facts that someone is going to supply. It's not going to come from the planning department, but you're looking for facts that someone's going to supply. And if you have those facts, you can move the bill, but you can't actually end up adopting the bill until you actually have something from the planning commission saying that they've heard the bill uh, and provide whatever they want to provide to you in terms of facts or no facts or just whatever they want to do with that report. Mr. Chair, you're muted. I'm good now. Any committee members want to chime in? No? Okay. Uh, let's Can we get Mr. Chair? I'm sorry. Yeah, who's this? Dorsey? Dorsey. Go ahead, Councilman Dorsey. Dorsey, go ahead. Yeah, so, okay, so I understand that we, we, we could move the bill here in committee, but the full council can't adopt the bill is that what you're saying vic yeah you need before you before you can actually adopt the bill we're talking on third reader at that point you need you need to have the uh, something from the planning commission saying that they've they've heard the bill i see um and mr chair back to the planning department did we hear that the, the planning commission is planning to hear this bill tomorrow thursday 
Thursday this week. Yes, I, correct. I just, I guess, Mr. Chair, I would, I would tend to concur with Councilwoman Clark that with only two meetings left in the the, the term here, that it would seem to be preferable, honestly, from my perspective, to double read the bill this coming Monday rather than double read the bill on the very last meeting. And, and I'll give you my sense of context for this, is that the outgoing mayor will then have that night and that night alone to consider the entire pile of bills that's put before him and out of respect for the outgoing mayor, I'd rather have those bills before him for, you know, two weeks rather than two hours. And, yeah. and so to me, the ability to expedite um, this and any other bills at this very late state in the term um, seems to be just favorable in the public interest. That, that's, you know, so I would ask if, if there might be some reconsideration, I would want to be able to move this bill today. No, I, I understand. Good point. Um, let, let us go, since you, Councilman uh, Dorsey and Councilman Clark, and I think along the same lines, I want to give the courtesy to Councilman uh, uh, Cohen. I'm hoping he's still there to give his input because it's his district. Councilman Cohen, are you there? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, look, I, you know, I, I concur with my colleagues. Uh, you know, I think that for there's we have a letter of support from the community association. There's been this has been over a year. There's been a lot of diligence from uh, folks in the neighborhood. Um, people are excited about this project. Um, uh, you know, if if the committee sees fit to hear it and vote it today, I think that would be great. The councilman proceeds premise. I think it would a little bit of pressure off the outgoing mayor at the very, very end, off the council. Um, but, you know, I also want to respect, of course, the planning commission um, and the planning department and their staff as well. Um, so, you know, would prefer that it get voted today. Um, I, you know, I certainly, this project has been in the public eye for a long time. Um, but you know, also we'll defer to you all. Okay, uh, Catherine, thank you. I, I'm on the same lines with my two colleagues and yourself. Um, what I have to go back is to Victor, is that uh, we got to go through the process, the other agencies, we got to go through public testimony. But Victor, if we, we do the finding of facts, here's my question to make sure I say it correctly. We do the finding of facts and we vote on the finding of facts. We just need for the planning staff to send us a letter on the report, a report letter, whether they support it or not. That should be sufficient. They, yeah, that should be sufficient. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go on to HCD. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Stephanie Murdoch, for the Department of Housing and Community Development. We stand by our report. No objection. Thank you. BDC? Mr. Chair, uh, the BDC has actually changed its position on this bill within the last 24 hours based on additional information that was provided by counsel for the developer. Uh, I don't know that that has been received by the committee at this time. I know it was sent over late last night. Uh, if you prefer, I can read this into the record at this time. Yeah, for clarity purpose, whether it's favorable or unfavorable, just let me know, uh, are you favorable or unfavorable? We are in support of passage of this bill, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Walking authority. Good morning, Frank Brzezinski with the Baltimore City Parking Authority. No opposition to the legislation. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's with the agency reports. Let's go with uh, public testimony. Matt, we have uh, public Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Um, before I um, start, I'll just remind everyone one last time that if you would like to testify, please use the raise hand function in WebEx or uh, the chat function to let us know if you're not able to find the raise hand button. Uh, and we have Joseph Woolman for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Woolman? Uh, good, good morning, morning almost afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the yeah. committee. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah Mr. Woolman, Mr. Woolman, before you begin, uh, have you been watching and hearing the testimony from the committee? I have. Okay. Uh, I think somebody has to mute, but what I need is what we need is that we would need the finding of facts to move forward. Uh, correct. So go ahead. You got the floor. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And you are correct. And we did submit a written version of the findings of fact. This is not unlike the hearing we all had last week where I read for the record the findings of fact into the record. I'll go into my former district court prosecutor mode and try to read this quickly because uh, I know you guys have been, been meeting for quite some time this morning. Um, uh, the, the findings of fact reads as follows. Land Use and Transportation Committee findings of fact. Uh, motion of the Chair of the Land Use and Transportation Committee after a public hearing at which agency reports and public testimony were considered and pursuant to sections 10304 and 10305 of the Maryland Land Use Article and sections 5508 of the Baltimore City Code. City Council adopts these findings of fact concerning the rezoning 3127 East Baltimore Street City Council Bill 19-0453 rezoning. Upon finding as follows with regard to population change, the population of the neighborhood continues to change its properties like the subject of this bill are redeveloped for a variety of commercial and residential uses. Number two, the availability of public facilities, adequate public facilities are available for a variety of uses. Number three, present and future transportation patterns of properties in close proximity to various transit routes. Number four, compatibility with the existing and proposed development for the area. The rezoning is compatible with all existing and proposed development in the immediate area. The recommendations, number five, recommendations of the city agencies and officials, including the Baltimore City Planning Commission, the Board of Municipal Zoning Appeals. The planning staff has expressed an unfavorable position and the Planning Commission will review the bill on November 12, 2020. Uh, the BMZA recommends passage of the bill. I'd also add uh, that the BDC is now in favor of the bill. Uh, number six, the proposed amendment's relationship to consistency with the city's comprehensive master plan. It does conform to the comprehensive plan. Uh, live goal one, objectives one, two, and five. Goal two, objective four, play goal one, and objective four. Number seven, existing uses of the property with the, within the general area of the property in question. There are a mix of commercial residential uses uh, in the general area. Uh, number eight, the zoning classification of other property within the general area of the property in question. There are commercially zoned properties in proximity to the subject property and in the general area, including C1 property one block away. Number nine, the suitability of the property in question for the uses permitted under its existing zoning classification. The property is not a row house property as its existing R8 zoning would suggest. Number 10, the trend of development of any in the general area of the property in question, including changes, if any, that have taken place since the property in question was placed in its present classification. There are currently multiple development projects of mixed use and commercial nature in the general area of Southeast Baltimore. Number 11, for rezoning based on substantial change in the character of the neighborhood, the following facts establish the substantial change since the time of the last comprehensive rezoning. There have been multiple changes uh, to former industrial and in, 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 Institutional, industrial, and residential sites are now being developed as mixed use and commercial properties in the general area. The population of the neighborhood is growing and changing. Number 12, for rezoning based on mistake in the existing zoning classification, the following facts establish that at the time of the last comprehensive zoning, the council failed to consider then existing facts or projects or trends which are reasonably foreseeable and or events occurring subsequent to the comprehensive zoning have proven that council's initial premises were incorrect. It was a mistake to zone the site an R8 row house district property. The church is no longer actively operating and was being contemplated as redevelopment site at the direction of a community charrette over the last several years. With that, I'll submit the findings of fact and uh, my client, uh, the owner and developers available for any questions as well. Thank you. Any, any questions from... Any questions for the committee? For the developer? Yes. Me? Any questions for the developer, for the developer from the committee? Yes. Go ahead. Um, Very you were recommended, Very your client was recommended to pursue a neighborhood commercial establishment solution 
Um, do you have any comments on that on that pathway? Certainly. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Clark. Um, yes, neighborhood commercial is, is definitely uh, an option for someone in a row house, corner row house building that used to be a storefront. Um, I think it's more appropriate in that situation to Mr. Uh, to Mr. to Councilman Dorsey's uh, uh, testimony earlier or statements earlier that, you know, this is not a row house property, clearly dating back to the early 1900s. It was not a residential property. Um, therefore, I, I don't know if neighborhood commercial is the most appropriate path. It is one you could take. I respect the planning department's position regarding neighborhood commercial. It's a highly useful tool in a lot of scenarios. Unfortunately, there are actually uh, at least a couple uses uh, that are not permitted under neighborhood commercial that we may consider uh, for this project, including a financial institution, if you wanted to do a small bank branch or a health clinic. I believe outdoor dining can also be an issue at times. Um, but the bottom line is, for, for a variety of reasons, the C1 zoning provides by right zoning uses that as we try to attract tenants in a very difficult environment because of COVID-19, uh, we need to have that flexibility to attract commercial tenants. If a commercial tenant is looking at a property and they hire council and they see that it's a resident, residentially zoned property, it raises red flags and it has a chilling effect on our ability to attract business to a project that the neighborhood is very anxious about seeing get done. So, but for all those reasons, while I respect the planning staff's position regarding neighborhood commercial requiring us to go to the zoning board, which there's no guarantee how that result would come out anyway, would be would be difficult uh, and more importantly would make it make it difficult for us to attract business to this area thank you mr wallen go ahead councilman clark you still have the floor go ahead no that's all i wanted to hear thank okay. you thank you okay. uh matt any other public testimony uh, thank you mr chair does not look like we have anyone else who would like to testify Okay, um, be before we go uh, into the finding of facts, because there's no amendments, um, I, I just want to thank uh, my colleagues, Councilwoman Clark and Councilman Dorsey, for your input on this, um, for the clarity and your concern. Um, I really appreciate it. It is a committee. So at this time, um, uh, I'm looking uh, for a motion to move the finding of facts. I would move the finding of facts, Mr. Chair. Okay, move by, move by Councilman Dorsey, second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in finding of facts say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. Hey. Yeah. Somebody say nay. Yeah. Who? Stokes, nay. Stokes. Stokes, okay. So, regards to the motion of finding of facts, we have seven yes findings with one no which is councilman stokes um there's no amendments do i have a motion to move the bill favorably i'd like to move the bill mr chair okay move by councilman dorsey second by do i have a second do i have a second yes clark second, second by councilwoman clark uh, let's go to a vote favorable on the bill. Vice Speaker is a yes. Sneed? Yes. Sneed's a yes. Clark? Yes. Clark is a yes. Costello? Councilman Costello? Um, I'm a yes. Councilman Costello is a yes. Dorsey? Yes. Dorsey's a yes. Middleton? Yes. Middleton's a yes. Pinkett? Yes. Pinkett's a yes. Stokes? No. Stokes is a no. Let it be stated that it, we have one. We have seven yes with one no. Um, bill 19-0453 passes favorable. Will come out November the 16th. Before I, I end, I just want to ask that either Councilman Cohen's office or the attorney representing the applicant 
uh, to call over to the Planning Commission to uh, ask that the uh, hearing, which is Thursday, I think it's item five, for them to postpone the hearing. Uh, I would appreciate it. Um, so at this time, the bill passes. This is City Council Bill 19-0453. That's the last hearing. I want to thank all of my colleagues for, for attending. Uh, stay well and uh, have a good day. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, I have go a ahead. request. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, these have been four very unusual but important issues. Health and health. Um, and I, I would ask for you to consider asking that they all be double read on the 16th, if possible, so that the mayor will have time to hear out the rationales that I think have been so well explained here. Thank you. No, I, I agree with you and Councilman Dorsey, and I will I will pass that on. I will I will request that. I mean, okay, Councilwoman. Okay, this concludes uh, land use uh, hearing. Bye.